back to blue. I just had to turn it on again. It went, it went back to blue, so I... Yeah. Now it's back to red again. And it might be hit and miss. So... <laughs> just as long as you don't touch that or touch the one up here. Right. Fine. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we begin, I was um, remiss last week to um, remind everybody that where we sit is where there's a yellow tag. So the yellow tag on the seat, you sit at that yellow tag. It should be at your back. And so um, if you can make sure you're at a yellow tag because we did space it out to have six feet in between people. And then as we do that, um, just make sure um, we keep our masks on. And if we sing, it's, it's very quietly under our, our masks so that since we don't know who's been vaccinated or not, and we want to make sure everybody stays as safe as possible. I did get my second shot this week, and so I am not safe yet. <laughs> I've got two more weeks, and then it, it kicks in, they say. So I am still trying to keep my um, distance and stay safe as well. So let's all um, be as safe as possible, loving our neighbor as best as we can. For our announcements, um, we do have at 10 o'clock on Wednesday our Bible study. I believe there's an SPRC meeting on Tuesday night. Um, I'm not think I can't think of anything else that is happening in the life of the church, although 
There is a little bit more activity. Oh, the bells. The bells are, are practicing tomorrow night. Um, and I think that announcement really is pointed at me more than anybody else. <laughs> to remind me to come to bells. And so the bells are practicing. On May 16th, we do have the bells playing. So um, we will have a few more people in the church and the bells playing. That'll be nice. We're getting a little bit back to normal. And that's a good feeling. Today we will have communion. It's going to take a little bit for us to announce how we do it. So I'm going to ask for your patience during this service. It's not something I like to do because I like to have that holy flow and just go with everything. But we'll have a little different way. Because I'm, I'm certain you are as tired as I am of the styrofoam wafer, wafers and trying to fight with those cups. Um, I call them fast food, fast food Jesus, you know, and I'm, we're going to um, actually have some bread and um, juice that thankfully Dick and Leslie um, helped prepare for us. So a little bit going towards normal and a little bit more. So we are going to try that today. With that, I invite you, oh, also the um, table where that little church is, it's not really that little, the church, that's where we put our offerings, so if you are looking for that, it's there, and we also have some envelopes that people have not picked up. So, with that, let us center ourselves on Christ. I invite you to join me in the call to worship that is in your bulletin, as well as on the screen. Brothers and sisters, if you lift your net and it is empty, come here. We'll cast it out again into Christ's abundance. If you open your eyes but do not recognize the Holy One, come here. You'll find the risen Christ here among us. If your life is filled with mourning, come here. Christ is leading a dance of joy. Come here, brothers and sisters, to give blessing and honor and glory to God. Let us give blessing and honor and glory to God as we have the hymn, Come Christians, Joy to Sing.
Let us, let us pray. Lord, like Peter and the disciples, returning to the familiarity of fishing, we want to return to the familiar and routine of life after a pandemic. Come, risen Christ, meet us on the shore between what we are familiar with and where you want to take us. Give us the grace and courage to hear you calling to us again into new resurrected life as we worship you. Open our ears to hear you in song and word this day. In Christ we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of our Lord. Later, Jesus himself appeared again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana, Cana of Galilee, Zebedee's son, and two other disciples, disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I'm going fishing. They said, we'll go with you. They set out in a boat, but throughout the night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize it was Jesus. Jesus called to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, no. He said, Cast your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they did, and there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. Then Simon Peter heard it was the Lord. He wrapped his coat around himself, for he was naked, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from the shore, only about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire there, with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them. Yet the net hadn't even torn. They themselves had to ask, I'm sorry, the net had not torn with so many fish. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask, who are you? For they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. For the word of God spoken, for the word of God made flesh, for the word of God among us, we give you thanks. I invite you to pray for me as I pray for you. Here we are, Lord Christ. Because you and you alone hold the words of life. Speak to us again. Fill us with your presence. May we leave this place knowing you better, hearing your call. Change us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We are in our series of stories after Easter, after the resurrection of Jesus. We are into the resurrection stories. And we are in John. And it should sound somewhat familiar to you, this story. In Luke, it happens in the first few chapters. The miraculous catch. Jesus walking along the shore and 
the not yet disciples are fishing. That's their job. Peter and James and John and Andrew were fishermen. And they were out fishing and they didn't catch anything. And Jesus yells to them and says, put your nets down on the other side. Peter's like, we've just been hauling the nets in, but sure, we'll do it because you've asked. And he cast that net and they have to have other boats come and help them because they have a miraculous catch. And then Jesus says the famous words, follow me, I'll make you fishers of people. So we have this story already in Luke, but here, John, we have the story located after the resurrection of Jesus. And when I read this story this week again in my studying, I was just drawn to the fact that, you know something, I get the disciples. They have been through something very traumatic. Holy Week was just a few weeks ago not even a few weeks ago, and, and they lived through this time together where they were celebrating the Passover and excited to be with Jesus for that Passover, to have that all turned upside down. Jesus is betrayed by one of them that they trusted and then hauled away, tried, beaten, and crucified. And then, miracles of miracles, he rises from the dead. It is this chaotic three or four days for the disciples. They're not long past that. What do they want to do? Go back to the familiar. Let's do what we know how, what to do. We know how to fish. Let's go fishing. Right? Don't you feel that way? It's been a year. Let's, let's just go to church. Let's just do what we're, we're known. Let's just go to a restaurant. Let's just, we want to do something normal. We want to do it without our mask on, too. We want to just go back to the way things used to be. And, and, and we don't, we still feel out of control. I mean, the disciples, what do you do when somebody's raised from the dead? How do you respond? What, what, what's going on? And Jesus is just showing up every so often. What, what, what is our next step? Let's just go fishing. And maybe you're there too in this pandemic. What's our next step? When are they going to relax more of these things? When do we get to be with grandkids and great-grandkids again? When do we just get to be normal again? Let's go fishing. Let's go back to what we know how to do. We know how to do communion. We know how to sing hymns. We know how to do church. And, and the beautiful thing about it is they go back to fishing. And Jesus meets them there. Jesus comes to them in the familiar, but he doesn't want them to stay in that familiar place. He doesn't want them to stay there. Because he didn't call them to become fishermen again. He promised them that they would become fishers of men, fishers of people. He was giving them a call to something bigger and greater than just everyday normal life. But they wanted to get back to normal. And Jesus doesn't sit there and go, you fools. Why'd you go back? He meets them there, and he performs that miracle that he did at the beginning with them. As a reminder, you've been called to something. You've been called to something greater. 
Now, the interesting thing is, when they go out on their own, they don't catch anything. You know, church, we can go back to normal as a church. We can go back to normal in our lives. But the same issues and problems that we had are still there. If we go back to the way we were doing things, it makes us feel comfortable, but we're still not catching anything. There is a saying that, you know, what is the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing and expecting something different. But man, I want to go back to the way things used to be. So bad, because that's the familiar and that's the comforting. And the good news is that Jesus is there waiting with us. He's like, okay, here, here I am. But I want to remind you that you're called to something greater. You're called to something bigger. You're called to something more than just making a living. Just going through these motions, you, you are called to be this little seed, this little spark that starts to catch on in other people's lives. You carry in you the kingdom of God, that peace that passes all understanding, that love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is in us, and God wants that to spread. He meets us where we are, reminds us that without Christ, we are nothing. Without Christ, we cannot do the abundant life. John 15 tells us, abide in me and I will abide in you. Apart from me, you can't accomplish this amazing love and grace, this kingdom building that I have for you without me. I can't live out in my relationships, you know, with my, I, I've said it before, I love my brothers, I, I love them dearly. We are on opposite ends of politics, and when they bring up politics, my reaction is not Christ-like. <laughs> and I have a feeling that many of you might have that same thing in your own family, and so we don't talk politics, which just taught us how to be a society that doesn't know how to dialogue with each other. We become a society that has to tear the people down that we disagree with instead of building bridges we set fire to everything and instead of building a relationship and saying how do you see this and this is how I see it and how can we work together to build a community we Throw each other out, because you disagree on one thing. I've been in those conversations online where, you know, somebody else calls me a heretic. I'm like, well, I, I believe in Jesus Christ as God in flesh, walking among us. I believe we are saved through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. I believe the creed. <laughs> but because I'm a female pastor, wait. <laughs> Are we saved by grace or are we saved by what we believe, checking boxes? You know, we, we want to throw each other out. You, you get it in politics all the time. Well, they're not a real Democrat. They're not a real Republican. And, and then it, it filters down into our lives. And it doesn't even have to be on politics. We get mad and angry, and we don't know what to do with that, and we just avoid people, or we become the porcupine and start, you know, sending barbs everybody's way. We don't want to go back.
to that. Well, we're in that to a point right now in our culture. If we want a different result, we have to do something different. Jesus invites us in the midst of trying to go back to normal to dream something bigger. Bigger for our families. Your relationship with your parents, with your spouse, with your children. What does it look like to have Christ in the middle? Even if they are not believers or don't attend church anymore, how does it look like for Christ to be your center in how you respond and relate to each other? What does it look like to be more gracious and kind? What does it look like in our community with your neighbors when, and I have, I have three or four neighbors moving in right now, right next door to me. One has a pig and a beehive. It's an interesting, my dog is going crazy. There are so many new smells, and then the house next to them has, or a couple doors down, has like four dogs, and my dog's going crazy. So what does it look like for me to become neighborly to them? To welcome them, to participate in community and build a community with them. Even though my dog is going nuts. How do I find ways? Because I could be like, man, it made my life harder because I can't walk my dog easily anymore. I literally have to walk my dog and, and make sure, okay, who's out? All right, it's safe for me to go down this road now. And, and I have to have escape routes because she's a big dog and we haven't learned how to communicate with her on a leash. You know, in my, in my little area, she communicates really well, sees a dog or a pig, and she doesn't communicate well. She forgets who she is. She doesn't know her name. Quinn, if I see Quinn, I'll let her know not to bark anymore. It's, it's a tough situation. How do I not let that become divisive for me? How do I reach out in the love and community of Christ? Because God has called me not to be fishermen, to fish, fish, but fish people, to capture the hearts of people. And we do that with that amazing grace and love of God that looks amazing and not petty. Doesn't look judging and, you know, while well, you're not as good as me, holier than thou attitude. It, it looks like a humble servant. Remember as we went through Holy Week with Jesus in Lent, we, we found that Jesus was overturning tables. And how do I overturn those tables in the world around me and become a servant? I may be the longest you know, person within a few houses staying in that my house, and there's new people, but, but how do I extend and serve them? Not make them conform to, to what my expectations are for a neighbor. How do we do that as a church and become a people that is reaching out? That church is not about us and fishing for what makes us feel comfortable, but go out and love our neighbor in such radical ways that they want to be around us. That they look at us and say, wow, God is at work in them. Look at what God is doing in their lives. Jesus stands with the disciples and feeds them breakfast on the lake shore. Not because everything's going to be the same, but because the future that God has for them is grounded in where they've been 
and who they are and in his love for them. But God's got something greater. God's got something greater for us in our lives, in our relationships. God wants to take us deeper with Jesus and deeper with each other. But it's not going to look the same. It can't. We're called to love sacrificially, to forgive amazingly, to be this little taste of heaven for the people that we've lived with for 50 years and the people we just meet. What does that look like in your relationships, in your community, in the checkout line at Tops, at Dollar Tree? What does it look like with your spouse, with your children? Because God's got something great for you. God's taking us on a journey to imagine the world in a new way. It's exciting. It's also a little bit scary. But Jesus is with us. I think as we journey to be better disciples, to get closer to Christ, the call is for us to imagine better and bigger. We can believe our community and our world can be better because God is with us. So come have breakfast. Jesus is waiting. We will recognize him in the breaking of the bread, in the space in between us, knowing that God is taking us to new places, new heights of love and grace and mercy, new expressions of faith. The call continues, follow me and I will make you fisher of people. Amen. In our bulletin as well as on the screen is our affirmation of faith. Let us speak this together. We believe in the God of resurrection. We believe in the God who turns chaos into order and brings light to darkness. We believe in the God who brings orphans home and calls them sons and daughters. We believe in the God who turns mourning into dancing. We believe in the God who turns the empire's tools of violence to oppress people into a place of and symbol of liberation. We believe in the God who turns graveyards into gardens. We believe in the God who does not let death have the last word, but speaks life into us and calls the dead to rise. We believe in the God who turns a mournful journey home into a race to tell the good news of resurrection. We believe in the God who meets us in our doubts and gives reason to believe. We believe in the God who meets us as we cling to the familiar while inviting us to future filled with hope. We believe in the God of resurrection. Amen. At this time, we will share our joys and our concerns with each other. Do we have any joys, any concerns? It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord, yeah. It is a joy to be together and in the house of the Lord.
but she went all over the world teaching people mm -hmm. and bringing joy. And Bob's sad to see that she's gone. She lived such, such a good life. Meredith Walker? Meredith Walker was born. She wrote children's songs and she traveled over the world. And he used to sing songs in church and with the kids in front of school. So Meredith Walker is in the obituary, and so if you would like to read her obituary, that's an amazing story. And so we give thanks for her life of adding songs to children's lives, as well as pray for the family and those who mourn. Joyce has a hospital procedure. So we will pray for her. Melanie? Uh, Jojo, Jojo and Rocky are having their tonsils out. I had my tonsils out too, Jojo, and I was only three years old. And you know what I remember? I remember a lot of ice cream afterwards. <laughs> so it's not all that bad. Ice cream and pudding. So we'll make sure mom has both. Anyone else? Amy. Joy, our granddaughter Anna, um, had just got her paralegal certificate when the pandemic hit. So Hannah has a job. Yeah. Thanks be to God. That's wonderful. Yes. Yes, Anita's granddaughter is the valedictorian in, in her high school. So that is a praise indeed. All right, well, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this time together, this space that we are in. Um, it is sacred to us, but Lord, we know that the only reason there is anything sacred is because your presence, you are with us. And so we give you thanks that in this place, as we gather, you have promised where two or three are gathered, you are there with us. And we give you thanks for that. We, we ask, Lord, that you would be in our world, especially in Jojo and Rocky's world, as they um, are having surgery this week on their tonsils and bring healing to them. We pray may all the procedures go well and um, may they enjoy the ice cream and pudding. Be with Joyce as she faces um, a procedure this week. Give her the strength and the healing she needs, we pray. We pray, Lord Jesus, for Hannah as she um, joins the workforce in this new job. Be with her. May she make a good impression. May she find joy in the work that she does. We thank you for Anita's granddaughter and the Victorian. Um, we ask that you be with her as her future lies ahead and that she will find the grace and strength she needs, Lord Jesus, to continue down this path. We pray for the family of Meredith Walker, who is um, whose past be their peace that passes all understanding. Lord, for those that we did not name, but we hold them to our hearts our, and, and close to our hearts, we we ask a special prayer for them as we name them to you now in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For our world, O oh God, we pray. 
We pray that you would bring peace to the places where there is war, bring peace to where there are natural disasters. Lord, we pray for world leaders and for our president, our congress, our governor, our mayor, and all of our representatives. Give them hearts, Lord Jesus, to govern and to do the work that is needed to do to be able to bring peace and healing and help to our communities and to those in need. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would guide them, give them hearts for justice and peace. We pray for our church, for our denomination, for Bishop Mark Webb, for Reverend Jeff McDowell, our district superintendent. Lord, guide us and direct us in the midst of all the noise from this world and from the movement in the denomination. We want to be Christ-centered people, following you, being radical lovers of God and neighbor. Work in us, move in us, Help us to be faithful people in our relationships with each other, with our family members, and faithful in our, our service to you. So that the world would see your grace at work in us. And then may we be evidence in how we love and are gracious to others of your amazing grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare for communion, our hymn is Here is Bread, Here is Wine. Let us pray. Gracious God, in love you created us. And when our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You called to us through the prophets to come home, to find our fullness and our identity in your love for us. And at the right moment, you sent Christ into the world 
to bring good news to the poor, to set free the captive, to heal the sick, and to proclaim that your day, your kingdom, had come. We remember on the night that Christ was betrayed, how he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these gifts of bread and cup and the mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in union with Christ's sacrifice as living and holy sacrifices to you, O God. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and, and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with each other, one in Christ, and one in ministry until Christ comes.